Bruchem Aboim. Last week we finished off with a lecture on children. And this week um, I thought what we would deal with is a problem dealing with children, and that is uh, intermarriage. And uh, something that's very prevalent today. I'd like to begin with a story. There was a Murano in the time of the Inquisition who um, had a wife, three children, and the Murano, though he was a orthodox individual, had elderly parents. And when the Inquisition came, he became a Murano. He stayed in Spain and feigned he pretended to be a Christian because he knew that his parents couldn't take the journey that it would kill them. And so he stayed with his family and became a secret Jew. And his parents passed away. And then he found out through a friend of his that the Inquisition um, had found out, suspected him of observing Judaism. And in the dead of the night, he had to run for his life with himself, his wife, and his children. And they fled to Portugal. And there, in Portugal, they were in a refugee camp, tent city. And the, the conditions there were very difficult, very poor. And an epidemic broke out in the camp. And first, his two sons died from the epidemic. And then his little daughter, Chayla, died. And after that, his wife got the epidemic as well. And when all of them had passed away, he lifted his eyes up to heaven. And he spoke to God. And he said, I know you're testing me. He said, when the Inquisition came, I didn't give you up. I, ha I held on to my Judaism. And when we came to this tent city in Portugal again, I know you tested us. And I didn't give up our Judaism. And then when my two sons died, I still loved you and didn't give it up. And then little Chayla, still I didn't give it up. Finally, my wife. The way I see it, there's only two things left. My life and my Judaism. And my life isn't mine. You can take that. But the one thing you can't take is the fact that I'm a Jew. And that is the one thing that even you, God Almighty, can't take. The fact that I'm a Jew and connected to you. I don't think that people realize the gift that we have and the price that we paid throughout history to be who and what we are. I guess one of the reasons why I'm giving the class is it's a very easy to theorize. I have a daughter, daughter that married a non-Jew some 15 years ago. And one of the reasons for the class is because there was advice given to me that if you haven't heard it, that's said by many Orthodox people. And that is, if your child marries someone outside of the faith, what you do is you cut them off. And you no longer have anything to do with them. And that was the advice that was given to me. That I should cut my daughter off, and that I should have nothing to do with them. And the truth is, I listened. I didn't go to a wedding, and I really had no contact with her for quite a while. And I really put my faith and my belief in other people and their opinions. And in hindsight, I was totally wrong. And the advice given was totally wrong. Imagine God. If God worked with us that same way and cut us off because we weren't all that we should be, then the truth is, Avraham Avinu, Abraham, wouldn't have existed. His father was the greatest idol worship, idol merchant in the city. That if God would have cut his father off, Abraham wouldn't have been born. And this goes on and on, where many great people were born in some places that were the least likely. It's also interesting that 
in a synagogue, an orthodox synagogue, if someone walks in who you don't know, who is married to a Gentile, what people do is they reach out to that person, and for the most part very nicely are very kind to that person, very understanding, very benevolent. And their heart breaks for them, and they try to see whatever they can do to bring the other spouse around, or at least to accept them. They try in no way to hurt them. But what's interesting is if you know someone, a child that's yours, the answer is throw them away. Now how does that make sense? So if you know someone, you throw them away. If you don't know, some, know someone, then you bring them close. The logic doesn't follow. There was a, um, there was a Hasidic master. And he was asked this question. If your son married a shiksa, a non-Jewish woman, what would you do? And you know what his answer was? Love him more because he would need me more. And that's the answer. That is the answer. Not to pull away, but just the opposite, to come closer. Because when a person is sick, you know, when you're kind to someone who is kind to you, you've really done nothing. When you try to give kindness to someone who is not nice to you, now you are extending yourself. Now you are going past what you should be doing. That's a mitzvah. The other you would have done whether God said or to do so or not. It's a difficult time to be alive. You know, when the Torah describes Esav, it uses two terms. One is Esav, and then Achi, my brother. And it's very strange, because Yaakov only had one, one sibling. His only brother, his only sibling that he had, male or female, was Esav. So if it says Esav, we know it's his brother. If it says it's his brother, we know it's Esav. And the Torah is very stingy with words. So why would the Torah mention both Esav and Achim, my brother? And the answer is that Esav is the epitome of evil. That's what, he, that's what he symbolizes. And the truth of the matter is he comes in two guises. He comes as Esav, as, it, as an opponent to destroy us, so to speak, with the sword. Or Achim, my brother, to kill us with love and kindness, to take our children to assimilate and to take them away by being so nice to us, by complimenting us and making us feel good. And it really becomes our job from the time a child is born for us to be examples, for us to take, take, take responsibility not wait for others. That's what I did. I waited. I thought that the system would take care of it. The system doesn't take care of it. What takes care of it is you. I waited for rabbis. I waited for other people. My daughter was 25 when she got married. I was brain dead. You start dealing with this, and I did many things right, but I didn't do enough things right. And the truth of the matter is, in reality, you can do everything right, and it still may not work. But even if you did everything right and it doesn't work, it does not mean that you cut off the ties between you and your child. It's not acceptable. Just not acceptable. God still loves us. <laughs> Look what we do. And the truth of the matter is, it took me 18 years from the time I grew up in a traditional home. And at the age of 15, I left to any type of religion and wanted nothing to do with religion at all until the age of 33. And if you would have told me any time in the middle of that 18 years that one day I'd be here talking about religion and God, you would have had me on the floor laughing in stitches because there's no way I wanted anything to do with it. So where a person is today has nothing to do where a person may be tomorrow. I once had a person come up to me very distraught, a very educated person, a very cultured person. And he says to me, I was in my daughter's room and I found some marijuana. And he was besides himself. And he wanted to kick her out of the house and cut ties with her because she was into drugs. And 
so I smiled at him when he calmed down for a second. I said, when you were her age, what were you doing? And a big smile came over his face. He said, smoking marijuana. <laughs> it, and he's, it, it changes. You can't judge today on what yesterday was. That people grow, people get better. People find different things. People come to God for all different reasons. But to cut a child off is just not acceptable. How do we know that, you know, and the truth of the matter is, what if your daughter marries a non-Jew? The truth of the matter is, I'm not a rabbi, I don't have to answer it in a halachic way as far as what the law is. But get her husband to, to convert. Reform and conservative. If you can't get orthodox. But he's not a Jew. It doesn't make a difference. He thinks he is. And this way, at least the kid can learn how to make, your grandson or granddaughter can learn how to make a bracha. Maybe you can send your grandson or your granddaughter, who is Jewish, to a Jewish school because he thinks he's Jewish. And if you say, well, it's not real, and it's not important. Your goal then becomes, if you cannot save your daughter, at least save your, children, your grandchildren. They're yours as well. And when people pull away from this completely, you never know what the end will be. And there are many situations, and I've seen them, where the non-Jewish spouse becomes Jewish and becomes actually orthodox. That they start off in reform, then all of a sudden they become conservative. And lo and behold, one day, you know, there they are shaking back and forth, you know, and, they, and they're, they're in a prayer book putting on filling and doing the whole thing, and they're leading. It happens. It's a long life. We don't know. But again, and I'll say it again and again, it's not acceptable that we give them up. How do we know that a woman has the ability to pass Judaism and not a man? Again, it's a verse in the Seder of Aschanan, in the, Seder of, in, the Seder, in the book of Devarim. And there it talks about your son being pulled away. Because if your son marries a non-Jewish woman, your grandchildren, as much as it'll break your heart, and as much as it breaks my heart to say it, your grandchildren are not Jewish. Bring them up Jewish, give them Jewish names, call them whatever you want. The problem is, they are not Jewish. And it's not an easy thing to say, but that is Esau as Ochi, my brother. That he destroys us not with violence, but with kindness. And that sometimes is the greatest destruction that there can be. And that's what we need to counteract. And we do that by making sure that we live in Jewish neighborhoods, that we send our kids to Jewish schools, that we make sure they have Jewish friends. And it's not that the Gentile world is evil, just the opposite, they're nice. And that's the problem. It's very easy to get sucked into it. I mean, I dated many women that weren't Jewish, and many times there are people that, in hindsight, some of us that get, got married when we were Baal Chu, before we became religious, that married Jewish women, it, it was an accident. It didn't really make a big difference. God was kind. So we need to know not to make it an accident, not to make it something that happens just by happening. We need to create that by making sure where our kids go to school, who their friends are, and they know that Hitler tried to destroy us and that we have an achrayut, we have a responsibility, not just to God, but to our parents and our grandparents and all the people we came from that suffered for us to be here. And we need to know that what we have being a Jew is something that God Almighty himself cannot take away. And that becomes our responsibility to give to our children. That love, that desire. They need to see in us how important it is to us. How special. And when they see how special it is to us, whether we're religious or not, but just the fact that being Jewish is special, the end result will be that at least they have a fair chance of getting where they need to be. And God should bless us all that our children should be that and more and find their place and closeness to God, which is the ultimate end of everything. Thank you all for coming. God bless and have a good Shabbos.